A big hello to all the viewers joining us today from different parts of the world. Thank you for your time to connect with us. I promise it's going to be an informative session, especially for those who always like to stay updated, not only with the latest trends in the telematics market, but also with the trends in the best telematics software we are on. Dear viewers, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mirza Mohammad Nawaz. I'm a technical growth manager at the Vialon division. My colleague Maria Starikova, the product manager's team lead, is also here with us. And Maria will tell you more about the topics we'll be discussing today. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. And it's a big honor for me to be here as well uh, after such a long time and um, tell you more about the functionality of video module and the commercial side of it. and. Um, other interesting uh, topics that we will cover in our webinar. Thanks, and I hope this will be a very productive time that we will have together. So in regards to the topics that we are going to discuss today, let's see what we have. Actually, there are four of them, and uh, we will start with an overview of uh, uh, video in transport monitoring and uh, see what is the uh, current market about and what are trends are presented in it. Uh, after that, we will uh, move um, to see the um, functionality of uh, video module and uh, see what's new there. Uh, we will also surely let you know about real life examples of how uh, video and VLON combined can uh, give benefit to you and to your business and to the businesses of your clients. And finally, we will move to the billing uh, module that is also presented in uh, the new solution and let you know more about the logic of how we are going to build for this new functionality and how you can also build uh, the um, communication in this regard with your clients. So I'm passing the floor to Navas, who is going to start with the first topic of current market and trends. Thank you, Maria. Dear audience, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to leave them in the chat and we will address them by the end of the session. Now, without wasting any of your time, let's get to our first topic for today's webinar, video in transport monitoring, market and trends. Let's start with knowing what needs are present in the market. Generally, fleets install video solutions because they're looking for a better visibility into the on-road safety. Video solutions are often used for driver coaching and in case of an accident for evidence. In addition to the ability to record video and auto upload incident footage, a live streaming feature makes it possible to view live video from a camera remotely. This means that a fleet manager can use an online dashboard to stream live footage directly in a computer. Let's take a look at a few out of many tasks that video solves for transport monitoring. Accidents. Advanced AI can detect unsafe driving behaviors such as cell phone distraction, driver fatigue, etc., and can alert drivers in real time, which can prevent accidents. Event intelligence and in house safety team can analyze every video within seconds to determine the context and severity. Managers get prioritized videos with rich, actionable insights and drivers are automatically coached on correctable behaviors when they complete the trip. Using footage showing everything before, during, and after a safety event can provide a clear case study of driver directions. If an accident occurs, the fleet has video evidence. This can prevent false claims and help reduce claim cost of an actual event. In fact, many insurance companies recognize the advantages of video technology and offers discounts when they are installed in commercial vehicles. Usage of dash cams sends a clear signal to your insurer that you are serious about safety. With the ability to search and save the footage of an accident or event, you can avoid steep attorney fees, long drawn court cases and extensive insurance investigations. With video solutions alerting drivers of dangerous driving behaviors, the number of traffic citations can drop as well. 
That means lower out-of-pocket costs for your drivers as well as fewer points against their licenses. For many safety managers, it's stressful to know that your team is always out on the road for uh, far from headquarters and you don't know how they're doing. What are the road conditions? Is it icy or rainy out there? Are your drivers stuck in traffic? So live streaming makes it possible for managers to check in on drivers and ensure they're doing all right. You might not use this feature all the time, but knowing that it, uh, it is available can provide peace of mind for emergencies. With dash cams installed in your vehicles, your business emphasizes to employees the importance of a safety culture. Some businesses use the footage and driver report cards to recognize those who put road safety first. Fleet safety programs can cut risks, reduce costs, and improve your overall compliance and business reliability. Let's now talk about the hardware available in the market. While there are numerous video devices out there in the market, it's up to you to choose which hardware suits your project the best. Uh, talking about VLON, it's a hardware agnostic product and it's integrated with more than 2,800 devices already. And this includes almost 90 plus video devices from different manufacturers. To check the full list of video devices integrated with VLON, you can refer to the hardware section on our website, same as you've seen on the video in the presentation. I'm now going to share with you the most important feature or trends to consider when evaluating the best dash cam for your business needs. Events. No one can handle the recording of thousands of hours of video from hundreds of cameras, and it's almost uh, impossible to keep watching such long videos. What a user mainly needs is an image of a specific event at a specific moment, such as driver fatigue, harsh driving, drinking while driving, etc. This is the value customers will pay for. So it's important to see if the device you choose has the functionality to register such events. Connectivity. So far, this market is open for growth. Most of the countries today already have 4G technology available. And if your device supports 4G, the data transmission will be smooth. Even 5G is being rolled out across the world now. And we believe that 5G technology will open up new opportunities in the video security and telematics industries. The greater bandwidth and lower latency of 5G will make the regular mobile transmission of high quality images possible. ADAS, the Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. It promises to enhance vehicle safety by helping this, uh, the uh, process of uh, driving, reducing the sources of driver distraction that often leads to accidents. With ADAS support, drivers and their passengers can hope to find safer roadways. Front-facing dash cams uh, capture video of road ahead. So these cameras can be mounted to the windshield, providing truck drivers and fleet managers more visibility into their operations. Exterior cameras can be mounted to the outside of the vehicle to capture a 360 degree view of the vehicle's surroundings. This is particularly useful when drivers are uh, confronted with blind spots and need to make tight turns or simply change lanes. And there are also dual facing dash cams that can capture inward and outward facing video of, for a comprehensive look at both the road ahead of the cab and inside. So such dash cams offer uh, clear views of in-cab activity and outdoor surroundings. Interior cameras capture activity inside a vehicle to keep passengers safe and boost cargo security. Trucks and trailers can use interior cameras as well to reduce or resolve cargo theft by continuously monitoring all in-cabbing activity. The trends I've mentioned are just a few. The scope is endless. You can be a trendsetter too by utilizing VLON's video monitoring features to solve challenges of your clients from different industries. My colleague Maria would now like to present to you the functionality of the new video module in VLON. She will also speak more about its architecture. Maria, over to you. Thanks, Navas. And um, yes, it's true that video solution is, of course, a trend in telematics market. And with the help of this technology, it becomes possible to take a different look at solving problems. And it is likely 
very likely that in the nearest future it will be able to replace the tools that we use now and bring telematics to a qualitatively new level. In order to support the development of this area, a year ago in summer we presented an updated video module to you. The solution combined uh, different uh, functions that we alone had before into a single monitoring module. And we did not stop there. We constantly improved the video module and added new features so that it could be used to solve problems even more efficiently. With this new release, we developed our solutions in several directions. We implemented a convenient billing system that is integrated into CMS where you can monitor traffic and receive statistical data on customers. And we also enhance the video solution functionality thanks to our service providers who connected to the beta versions and shared their impressions, which helped us develop our solution in the right direction. So I have this moment to thank you for your feedback. And uh, also because of it, we constantly worked on stability of the devices. Uh, and now we have um, all the functionality of the MDVR modules integrated with the new video module and it's fully available to you and your clients. And we are continuing to support new modules as well. And also uh, one of the most awaited things uh, is that we have added a video module on both Android and iOS mobile devices. And before I dive into more details, speaking on the functionalities that became available on June 1st, I'll remind you a little bit of the main features of the new module and we'll start particularly with its architecture. Previously, before getting to the alone, video from devices was sent to an intermediate server, which was installed, configured and administrated on the partner side. An intermediate server was needed in order to receive and process a video stream from MDVR or, in simple words, a video recorder for its further viewing through the interface of our platform. Now, it's not necessary in, and in order to simplify and make the video module more versatile, we have developed a new type of architecture. VLON receives data from various video recorders via cloud storage, Amazon Web Services. Intermediate servers are no longer needed because data is processed and stored on Amazon servers without the participation of a partner. Additional configuration of devices is also not required. The work on device integration is carried by our hardware team. We have supported all the features of MDVR modules that are already integrated into VLON. And for example, if some camera that uh, you already use with your client uh, supports broadcasting, then a video play uh, player will also be available uh, with this, uh, for this business uh, in the VLON interface. It means that you will be able to watch video online and if the device provides video recording, you can use the system also for watching video back in the past and saving, searching and playing video files. Uh, as Navas mentioned earlier, we have already integrated about 90 plus different modules of video devices so that uh, our partners have complete freedom in choosing equipment for their projects and are not limited to um, anything in this regard in terms of what we have already integrated into VLON. Uh, and in general, working with the video devices in VLON is similar to working with any other tracker and you don't need to think about any additional server uh, and writing complex commands for MDVR. So you can offer your customers a comprehensive solution right out of the box and I think that it uh, will really be helpful in uh, boosting your business and the business of your clients. And so now, uh, as I promised, um, I'm moving to sharing my screen. 
uh, with the functionality of uh, VLON and will show you um, live so how it works. As I have already said, we combined uh, all the functionality of video into one uh, section uh, under one tab so that it's not necessary to move from one tab to another and it's easy to analyze and view video and make conclusions and no additional steps are needed. So what we uh, what we see here, we see that um, uh, we can do mostly um, several uh, general basic actions here. So first one is uh, what we offer is view in live stream 24 seven. So if uh, we know that this is the basis of uh, uh, video uh, functionality, and uh, we also offer such an ability and to, for this, you, you just need to select uh, a vehicle for which you would like to see uh, the live stream. And as long as it's uh, been uploaded, uh, uh, I'm just going to tell you a little uh, more about what you can see also and what you can use um, uh, in this screen. So it's, you see it's up and running. Uh, and uh, so continuing this topic, um, I just would like to pay attention though so that you can see a uh, live stream for uh, all the cameras that are installed in the device. So you can select particular cameras uh, for which you would like to see live stream. Uh, and besides that, you can also um, you can also have a full screen for one camera or for as many cameras as are installed in the device. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, so that you can have a full picture of what is going on with your vehicle on the road or generally with the whole fleet, uh, you can. Um, uh, you can open and from different angles you can also see where is located a vehicle with what speed it is traveling what what its address is and how it's been mo moved right so now if you need to if you have some dispatchers that is looking at this live stream to uh, make sure that everything is going on i think that you have quite a comprehensive picture of what is uh, there and besides that uh, it's very convenient that right here you can also have settings of uh, video and uh, see cameras rename them uh, and uh, make sure that uh, everything is set up correctly and works perfectly and as always said that live stream is the basis and the basic function of um, uh, video monitoring. Uh, it's not always uh, easy to um, to provide such an environment where there is uh, resources. There are resources to li watch live stream and notice the events that are going on. Uh, that's why uh, we um, have uh, added a new feature that was not pre uh, not presented previously, uh, and it is an ability to watch your videos that happened in the past. So it's just this, uh, the same stream that I have shown to you, but this is something that is already over. And um, uh, I do the same steps here. I select uh, that I want to watch playback. So it's something in the past. I select my vehicle, I select cameras, and I also select the period. And let me try to play it. And um, uh, again, you see that now I see my uh, video that and it's it's real. So the vehicles are moving on it, the, the objects are moving on it. Uh, and uh, the difference between this and the live stream is that uh, it's it's really already happened and it's a recording and I have this timeline presented here that helps me to move my slider to any part of the uh, of this period that I have requested my uh, playback for and see what was going in a particular moment. In this case, I have requested uh, my playback uh, for one hour uh, from today in the morning uh, and uh, uh, and actually you see that right it's a one hour timeline and i can move my slider uh if 
if I know that, for, for instance, that uh, uh, some event or some accident happened at this particular time, uh, I can just move the slider and see what was going at this uh, second or this minute, uh, right? Um, without a necessity to watch the full timeline. Uh, and now if uh, let's say I'm a dispatcher and I understood that okay here I have some accident happening I need to save it to a file for further analysis for further investigation uh, or to analyze it uh, also uh, with the help of reports what was going on and comparing to the videos that uh, is also there I surely need some tools that helps me to save my file and it's also right at our hand here so let's say now i'm selected this point in the timeline and i know that it's time that i need i can uh, select the duration here i can set it up to one minute again and select the camera if i don't need all cameras i can omit uh, the cameras that i don't need and i can also select the tag which are uh, this list of tags um, it equals to the list of uh, notification types that we have and actually uh, it sums up all the types of, or most of the types of uh, incidents that have happened to a vehicle and will further on help me uh, find um, the necessary file and in this case uh, let me just you know select some um, uh, some tag let it be connection loss and i just save this file and if it's for four cameras then i'll have a group of uh, four, four four files uh, on one screen and will not need to you know uh, you know to look for each of it it will just be groups for uh, for convenience of a user as well so now the system says that uh, it's uh, it needs some time to process everything and uh, while we are taking this time uh, uh, so let me also tell you that um, okay, okay we have this functionality and it's there but uh, again it's not very convenient to have everything um, and do everything manually so to answer this requirement to you know to match this market need we have also uh, done it uh, on the other side we know that in v alone there is a very sophisticated and profound notification system that already have we already have and we don't need to uh, you know reinvent something here that's why we decided that with the help of our notifications and with the help of all the triggers and all the actions that we already have we can just insert you know the action of saving a file upon uh, any triggers that VLO notifications can notice and uh, it will be very prompt because uh, we don't need to make up anything it's just say, uh, there already we can use it and uh, we can just say that uh, okay gonna send email but send um, but save a video file for me right uh so let's say that uh, i have already prepared for this uh, uh webinar a notification and we'll just um, give you a small overview of how it works so um no, no secrets here nothing special but let me uh, still give you um, step by step overview so we select the device we select the trigger type and other settings that are necessary here and almost on the last step we need to uh we need to specify that we really want uh, upon this trigger right in my case it was entering the geofence and uh, leave it the geofence but it can be actually anything it can be fuel theft it can be fuel filling it can be uh, alarm button so everything that is possible within the notification module vlon uh can be uh, can be linked to saving a file from an NDVR, and in this case, it's GFNs uh, type of uh, type of event. Um, and I select that I want to, my file to be saved upon entering uh, or leaving the GFNs. I select the duration before and after event, uh, and it just shows me that okay, you will have a file of five seconds in duration. Uh, and then, uh, so I'll save it and uh, upon 
So just once the system sees and there is a trigger that vehicle has left the defense or has uh, vice versa, it has entered the defense, uh, so we'll have our file saved and can further on work with it. Uh, so now you see that we can also um, save files uh, with uh, the help of uh, our notification system. And in this case, you don't need to spend time on analyzing and saving files manually and can save resources. Now let's return to actual files and see what you can do with it. So you have it either manually or um, automatically saved with the help of notifications and surely you need to uh, you need to watch them uh, and analyze in more details everything that was going on with the vehicle for particular uh, time frames or events or within some accidents so uh, let me give you a brief overview here so we have um, a list of files in this uh, screen and um, they are sorted by the uh, date uh, and time and also we see there here the name of the notification for which it was saved and if it was saved say manually uh, just as what i have shown to you uh, on the black playback tab it will just say okay it's saved manually and it's called this way here we have a lot of uh, tools uh, to uh, to filter and sort the uh, files uh, and uh, manage them. For example, delete the files that you don't need anymore. You can filter by date, type, name of notification, or just see those that were saved manually. So this is uh, how our um, filtering works here. And uh, besides that, there is one very important thing here, and uh, I'll just move a little bit um, further into my description of how uh, and for what we build uh, for using this video module, and we'll touch upon storage of video files. So we will each each vehicle, each unit will have a storage of uh, five gigabytes for all the period of using video module, and this storage is cyclical, which means that. Uh, if uh, you have already more than five gigabytes in the storage, the older files will be removed and will be overwritten with the newer files. And that's why uh, we have implemented a very nice uh, option uh, to mark some files as important. So when this, uh, this um, overwriting will take place, these files that are important and marked this way, uh, this way they're not uh, touched and they're saved in storage and can be returned to any time you want. Uh, that's why here you see that you have a storage and uh, how much is already um, there, so how much is left, and you also see how much is left uh, of important storage. So once again, we have five gigabytes of storage for one unit, and it's cyclical, and it is given for the whole period of using the video module. And we have uh, a one gigabyte storage of important files that are marked with a star icon and will be not overwritten when the storage is full. So we'll, they will be saved just the way they are. Um, and um, uh, let me show to you my files that I saved today. Uh, it was for today in the morning, as I said, before 9 and 10. It was approximately 9.15, so it's right here uh, and it's saved uh, already. It's, uh, it's time the time has passed uh, for it to be saved. And we can see that it's presented on the screen. So we are done with this uh, this part, and um, um, here um, it's all the functionality is very important, of course, uh, but uh, we have also provided other instruments for analysis that uh, will also be very helpful um, because uh, they will not require you or your clients or users of your clients uh, you move from tabs to tabs to make some profound analysis of what was going on and uh, compare um, data from devices and uh, with the video uh, video footage.
what I'm going uh, to talk about now is that we have also integrated video functionality into the reports module. And let me show you what I mean here. So, um, uh, I mean that now the files that already saved either manually or automatically with the help of notifications can be linked to any type, almost any type of re reports where it is applicable. And uh, while analyzing a report, you can uh, you can see uh, all the data that are um, that were received from a vehicle and compare them with the file and with the, what was going on uh, from the point of view of what uh, is in the video, right? So you don't need to see reports first of all, and then move to video. It's now in one interface and seems to be very convenient for this. Okay, uh, I know that I have uh, for my geofence uh, functionality uh, for checking upon entering and leaving geofence. I know that I have already some files saved. So let me see, uh, I think it was for yesterday. Uh, so let me see this uh, file. I will uh, just, uh, you know, try to make the time frame a little smaller so that I don't uh, need a lot of um, um, messages and this rows to analyze. Uh, and just as an example of how it works and how reports are linked uh, uh, to uh, a linked to video. This is how it looks like. So I have my reports and I can have any data in it in, in the table. I can, as I said, can add it to almost any type of, uh, of a table. And right here where I can analyze everything with the, uh, with the, uh, geofence in this, uh, in, in this case or unit in other cases or other elements, I can also see already, a uh, um, a video file that is linked upon uh, the uh, time where their event happened. So we VLON is very smart and it can link the time of some event, let's say in this case it's geofence entering or leaving, or it can be fuel uh, fuel filling period or you know a period of a trip, and it can link the period of this uh, event to the time or again, the period of um, duration of a video file. And uh, um, just like here, I can uh, simply switch to the files that are uh, all linked to my report uh, and see, um, play them and see what was going on at this moment. So for, for this, you just need to uh, add um, Table, uh, in the table, you just need to let, uh, to add the uh, video column and it appears there and the VLON uh, has noticed that there are files that are in this time phrase, it will automatically link them to the report. And uh, the last part here, um, so that not to waste too much time on explanations, but uh, I really want to show it to you. And again, it's the tool that helps to analyze the situation on the road uh, and it's our uh, markers. So before we also had markers, uh, video markers that um, can be used in uh, in tracks that can be used in charts, reports, um, and other places. But now we also uh, re um, we remade it a little bit and made it uh, more sophisticated to use. Uh, okay, and um, uh, can uh, see um what are in these markers right so if you build some uh track as it's right here uh and uh, you you can also it's already linked you can see uh the uh, markers there if they are selected and you can see the video file just a second you can see the video file there as well, right? And it's open in a new interface uh, with all the cameras there uh, and you can play it uh, just as we have already played it in reports or the same way as it's played in live stream or, uh, or um, playback. But 
inserted into uh, the already existing functionality of VLON for better analysis, for more effective analysis, and so that you don't need to waste time on moving from one tab to another uh, or one, one action to another. It's just now sorted into one place, and I think that's very organically um, introduced um, in the existing functionality of VLON. And uh, surely we have not forgotten about uh, mobility. Uh, and um, in this regard, I can also say that uh, we have um, functionality of uh, video module also implemented in iOS and uh, uh, Android mobile applications. Uh, and um, now users can control important events anytime, anywhere in a mobile application. And again, it seems to be very convenient. Uh, you can watch a stream online or video recording and see what is happening or happened to the vehicle uh, just uh, with the help of your cell phone. Uh, the user can use all the functionality in the smartphone or tablet at any time. Uh, and uh, for those of you who have already uh, tested how it works, um, I think that you have noticed that uh, it looks a lot like uh, the functionality of web version. And I can say the same about the functionality itself. So you can select a unit to, the, to view uh, broadcasts uh, from its cameras, configure cameras, receive video recordings uh, for the past periods uh, and work with them um, in, uh, in the form of files. Uh, the interface logic is very similar to what I have shown to you. And on the main tab, uh, just from what you see now in the presentation, you can see a list of units for which cameras are configured. So cameras can be configured not only for the um, in the monitoring system, but also in the video tab of the unit properties uh, of the mobile application and in the camera settings on the live stream tab. And uh, opposite uh, to the name of each unit, there is an icon with a number of configured cameras displayed. So now we are moving uh, to the next slide. Uh, and uh, to work with video, you just need uh, to click on the required unit in the list. Uh, and depending on the function supported by the device type of the selected unit, you can work with the stream, playback, and files tab. Uh, and uh, just as what you see on the screen, uh, it's a map and it's all the cameras that are in the unit. Uh, and uh, you can see the full pictures of what is going on from different angles with, um, uh, with your vehicle, also uh, with the help of your uh, mobile phone. Uh, then, um, uh, then we are moving to the next slide, and here we can see the functionality of playback. Uh, again, it looks very much the same as in the web application. So I think that from the point of view of uh, uh, of accustoming to the new interface, it will be quite easy. Uh, and here we can also select a unit and a period for which we can uh, and want to see recording. We can play it and or select uh, some part that should be played uh, with the help of timeline. And as well, we can save some part of it into a file if we see that something worth saving. Is there some accident or, you know, some... Um, uh, some events that should be uh, further on uh, investigated. Uh, and uh, finally, surely it is possible to work uh, with the files and see uh, the ones that were saved manual or automatically filter them and uh, surely see them. So to play them and uh, make sure that everything uh, is okay if it, or if it's not okay to make um, take some uh, immediate actions. And now it's in your cell phone and it should be, um, it should take not that much time to make sure uh, that everything is okay with uh, your fleet.
And uh, considering such a developed module in the mobile version, even on Saturday evening, even when you're relaxing in a cafe or with a family, uh, we alone will receive a notification, uh, for example, about speeding. Uh, and you can watch the video on your phone and understand what happened and if necessary, then save the desired video fragment to files. And uh, now I talked about uh, the main features of the VLON module and uh, really want to say that we have plans to further develop our functionality and I really hope that we will add a lot of nice features there. Uh, so please let us know about your feedback. We're constantly improving VLON and I hope that we'll do the same with video module uh, as well. And uh, now uh, let's talk a little bit about the real task, um, tasks that can be solved with the help of the video tools. And now I finally uh, give the floor to Navas, who is going to talk about um, some applications um, of a video module. So Navas, um, the floor is yours. Thank you, Maria. I'm sure the audience enjoyed that presentation. I can already see interesting questions coming in from the viewers, which we will be addressing at the end of this session. Uh, so now let's move on to our next topics. Uh, the practical application of video solution in different industries. One such example is passenger carriers like taxi, car sharing, public buses, etc. They have tasks that video telematics can solve, such as ensuring the safety of passengers transportation and monitoring driver's compliance with the rules of car rental. They also need to control working hours and what is happening in the cabin, have full visibility of the actions of the driver behind the wheel, such as smoking, using a mobile phone, etc. Tracking payments past the cash register is also important. Plus, they need to track theft and damage to the material views, uh, to motor vehicle parts or uh, to the parts of the, uh, to the whole vehicle itself. It's also possible through passenger counting technology in video devices to control the passenger traffic. This could be an important factor for public buses, especially now in the COVID era. Assisting the driver with tools such as ADAS that can alert him before committing a serious violation, such as crashing into a car while lane changing, driving over a pedestrian crossing the road, etc., are a few examples. Similarly, there are many other areas where video solution is applicable, such as vehicles carrying dangerous goods, control of all points of loading and unloading of oil products and other hazardous products is crucial for such businesses. For large containers carrying fuel, it might be very helpful to control fuel draining from a fuel tanker. Video monitoring can help avoid such events. And again, safety is very important when carrying dangerous goods. And by monitoring the condition of drivers, you can take necessary actions when you see the driver yawns, blinks, smokes, etc. So in other words, uh, there is no privacy left for drivers in this industry anymore, but that's for their own good. Not only the drivers are alerted on such events, but by using such smart video devices along with VLON's eco-driving functionality, you can even obtain statistics on the quality of driving. For example, the most distracted driver, who changes lanes more often than others without turning on the turn signal, who constantly drives the vehicle when tired, and so on. Using these statistics, managers can even make decisions on the bonus and salary of the drivers. Another example of an industry where video telematics can make, uh, can make huge difference is logistics and freight transport. As you all know, the most important factor for logistics business is the protection of goods that are being transported from the thefts and damages. Controlling people on the way and at the parking lots such as drivers, freight forwarders, porters, etc. and also prevention of misuse of the vehicle is also important. Fleet managers can keep an eye on these aspects using the live stream and playback options of VLON. Optimizing the routes using VLON can reduce costs such as fuel and cargo delivery time, etc. Video monitoring in logistics also helps with reversing. For example, logistics companies often have several cameras on their vehicles uh, aimed at the road, uh, the driver, and at the doors 
to see who opens the door, who takes out the cargo, or for example, who drops the package. Construction is another industry where video telematics is very useful. Video surveillance systems on special equipment can solve the problem of monitoring the work process, the operation of equipment, and the mechanisms. You can install cameras on the controls, buckets, manipulators, cranes, etc. to see the facts of the operation of the equipment. It also improves safety in construction to prevent non-compliance with safety regulations and damage to property. So the driver knows that all his actions are recorded. Therefore, he responsibly treats compliance with the regulations. It also helps with theft protection and likelihood of accidents and violations. Well, thefts here in construction industry can be referred to as inappropriate trips. Video monitoring is also a game changer in agriculture industry. By installing video devices, it can help you monitor compliance with safety regulations, such as the driver is wearing a seat belt while driving the tractor, and he's not carrying passengers on the tractor, and they are not jumping on or off a moving tractor, etc. Control of compliance with production processes, such as monitoring the usage of chemicals and fertilizers in the agricultural fields, is also possible. Protecting the fields from harmful species or animals, etc., can also be done using the live streaming or playback features of video module. Last but not the least, it also helps in controlling the fuel thefts from the vehicles or tractors. Railway transport is another example where video telematics can be useful. It can help in detecting various objects on the tracks, such as stones, sticks, etc., that could damage the train or could even lead to accidents. Video camera installed on a train can control the state of the cargo by detecting any fires, thefts, damage, etc. It can even let you monitor the compliance with safety regulations, such as ensuring that the passengers stay behind the yellow line at the train stations and passengers do not walk, bike, skateboard, or run along the railway tracks. Uh, it also helps to check all the doors are properly closed before the trains takes off. So, dear viewers, I believe now you have a better understanding of the huge scope and possibilities with video telematics, and I wish you all the best in applying it to practice. With this, we have come to the last and most interesting part of our webinar for some of you, that is the billing of the video module in VLON. Maria will tell you more about this. Over to you, Maria. Uh, thank you, Navas. And um, you're right. Um, in order to prepare our video module for commercial usage, uh, we have implemented a completely new billing system that is based not on the number of units and the available functionality of the monitoring systems, but rather on one gigabyte uh, traffic packages. Using this new system, you can conveniently purchase traffic for the video transmission for each unit separately from the rest of the VLON functionality, as well as monitor its consumption. Billing is based on the following principles. The user pays for the traffic uh, from a video device to Amazon Web Services Cloud Storage. Uh, the traffic is spent when the user watches a video online and playback uh, it as well as when a file is saved manually and automatically. Users do not spend traffic to watch videos that have already been saved. So they are on storage on um, Amazon Web Services. After purchasing traffic packages, the user gets access to all the functions of the new module and five gigabytes of memory in the storage of video files per unit for the entire period of using the video module, just as I already mentioned. And the storage is cyclical. So that is when the limit of five gigabytes is reached, the old files are deleted uh, and overwritten with the new ones. For each unit, traffic packages can be purchased as many times as you wish, but there is no need to stock the packages. The traffic purchased is not accumulated, and at the end of the month, the spent traffic expires. This is a very important thing, and I'm paying your attention to this. 
For the convenience of traffic control, we have implemented notifications that will warn you when there is uh, 100 megabytes left before the traffic is out. And in order not to be distracted by constant purchases of new packages, you can set up automatic traffic purchases, which I'm going to show you uh, just in a couple of minutes how to do it. And um, these were the main rules uh, of this billing system. And now I will move to the interface of VLON and show you how it works in more detail. So let me uh, share my screen of, uh, of uh, CMS Manager. And right here you see, um, you see it. Okay, so let's move to the video tab, uh, which uh, will be available for those uh, service providers that have this paid uh, uh, module uh, already um, connected uh, to their service. And uh, in this tab, you can see the list of uh, accounts for which we have uh, um, video monitoring service uh, activated. So no uh, other accounts, but just those that have um, this service there. Uh, I'm going to work with this account and here uh, I can see uh, all units that are video uh, devices by default. So we have already sorted only by those that are that can send video and can work with video. And you see this list here. And actually, this is the interface that allows you to uh, buy packages uh, and generally manage everything. So let's see how it looks like um, first with some new account mm. okay let me see what account i have mm. okay let's uh, let's still use this account uh, but uh, uh, as you see uh, here uh, we see the list of units we see um, some data that can be uh, necessary like creator and device type and we can also see how many traffic packages have already been bought. Um, this is the total purchased column. And in the other column, we can see the, um, I can see and use the functionality of um, uh, buying uh, additional packages. Uh, what I want to pay attention to is that in the total purchased column, we see the data uh, of uh, the current months. So as I already said, we do not stock up traffic packages. You don't need to buy them for the future. And just as uh, the first, uh, the months comes to an end, uh, you um, all the traffic packages that have already been bought, they are gone and you need to buy new packages. Uh, that's why it's not necessary to buy something a, a lot more in advance. Uh, but uh, if you need, you can surely purchase a package. This is what I'm going to do right now. And uh, I see uh, the changes that were applied. Also, if I need to, I can uh, use, um, you know, multiple actions here for my convenience and buy the units, uh, buy packages for uh, several units. If I know that they will be uh okay with uh, the same rules and um, traffic will be enough for all of them uh, and here i can also see the data that helps me to analyze how much traffic i have already spent or these units have already spent and how much storage is uh, uh, wasted uh, the first uh, the first number is uh, how much uh, traffic is spent already. The second number is how much traffic I have in general in terms of uh, uh, packages uh, that I have bought. So it's just uh, the number for two packages uh, that are enumerated here. And the same logic applies to storage. Uh, the limit is always uh, five, uh, five gigabytes and a little more just as you see it on the screen. Okay, and um, uh, this is uh, what concerns buying. Uh, and also one detail here is uh, that when you 
first by uh, some uh, traffic package or several traffic packages for your when you first try to activate a uh, video uh, for some units then traffic packages will be bought automatically the first one and you don't need to make any additional actions here you just activate video for a unit and you can start using it so it will appear in the vl1 uh, interface in the video tab it can immediately um send um, live stream and recording so it's that you don't need to perform any additional actions and i have two things very important ones left that i want to pay your attention to here and the first one is that i have talked already about is the automatic package purchase this is the functionality that allows you not to stock up the traffic packages but rather say that i want you uh, my traffic packages to be bought new ones once the previous ones are gone and to already spend and uh what uh, what you need to do here is very simple you just need to say what will be the limit for this uh, automatic packages purchase let's say uh, let's say it is five and then it means that for all of these units that you see on this screen uh it is possible to automatically buy uh traffic packages until five traffic packages are bought so once it's there so it's five already you either need to increase this limit or buy traffic uh, packages uh, manual which is will be available in any case so it's um, uh, it does not um this it is not this or that option it's both so you can you can use both of them um and this functionality is very helpful because uh, in this case you don't need to uh, always control how much traffic is left how much is spent uh, you can just uh, specify the limit and uh, the system uh, vlon will make everything for you but uh, in any case you still need to control what is going on with the um, uh, traffic how much storage is um, left and for this we uh, uh, offer uh, some statistical data that show how much traffic uh, is uh, spent um, and um, can you can use this statistical data in communication with your uh, clients and your clients can use it in communication with their uh, with their teams uh, to make sure that everything is again okay, to have some proof that uh, uh, really is a data where um, sent and were received and that's why uh, traffic was spent so here is the statistics that you see it's either by month or by unit by default uh, then you can also go deeper into details you can see uh, by the by each day in the calendar how much um, uh, how much uh, traffic is spent uh, in the months or even for a particular unit here and uh, you can uh, even go into uh, bigger details here and see one day so the 6th of june and one unit and see how much uh, traffic was spent uh, for it uh, in this um, within this date within the 6th of june mm -hmm. okay yes this is what i'm uh, i wanted to show you that for these units that is i know that it's sending data from ndvr uh, i can see at what periods in a day uh, we have received traffic and um, now i can make some um, i have some understanding of what why so much traffic was spent on this date so i hope that this will be very helpful uh, functionality and uh, i promise the last thing uh, it is that besides statistical data you can also see um, uh, notifications so there will be some notifications from vlon uh, that will let you know about approaching of uh, reaching a limit uh, upon traffic uh, and in this case if you enter cms and you see this notification you can surely make some actions either um, refill um, so buy new traffic uh, 
packages or you can maybe limit at some limit uh, for automatic refill so um, this notification will be helpful uh, to control the situation and not to lead to a situation when there is no traffic left and uh, because of this uh, it's not possible to watch stream or playback or get files via notifications uh, so i think that uh, this will be useful as well and I think uh, that in regards to showing you interface, uh, we are done here. I um, described the logic and how everything uh, works. Um, and um, um, so we have uh, implemented a module that is completely ready for commercial use. Uh, you can watch live stream, recording, both in web version and mobile platforms. You can set up cameras quickly and conveniently by traffic packages and monitors use with the help of charts that I have shown to you. And uh, please just let me remind you that uh, the trial version of the new functionality is available till July first if you already know that you would like to switch to a build version please inform your manager till june 28th to make the transition flawless so that um, again you don't need to make any actions on july 1st uh, so that you or, or all your clients um, continue to use their video module functionality and uh, the last important uh, thing here is uh, uh, the previous video module version will no longer be available after July 1st. But we do not stop there and we constantly follow the trends in the world of telematics as well as video telematics. And we really plan to um, make this solution better. And as always before, we are open to suggestions for the development of functionality, share your feedback and we will make the module even better. So the official uh, part uh, of uh, this webinar is um, um, is finished. Uh, now we can move to the questions that I have already seen um, a lot of which in um, in our chat. So thank you. First of all, thank you for being so active. Uh, let me please see what questions we have here and uh, try to answer um, some um, important ones uh, and uh, see what we can do with other ones. So yes, I just want to repeat that the recording will be available and those who left us or those who not presented uh, today will be able to watch this recording. So no worries here. Uh, then. Um, uh, so let me see the question. Uh, I think it's an important question about uh, billing. Uh, and it sounds like how to present to a client that the video traffic was consumed by the client and not by the partner. Clients seem to argue the traffic costs. So I have already partially probably answered this question. So you can see, uh, first of all, you, you see the statistical data for each unit for each date. Besides that, for more proof, you can uh, use our um, reporting tool that is called, um, so it's, um, it's called, um, journal i'm not sure what sir what it's just it just slapped my mind this word slapped my mind but uh, everything like uh, starting of live stream starting of playback uh it's uh, all written uh, in the user actions log and you can use uh, you can surely see for we need what happened and uh, uh, make sure that uh, no actions are missed so everything everything will be there um, and uh, combined uh, the statistical data and in CMS and this uh, user log uh, all together so you can have some proof of um, um, of what happened to traffic and what uh, functionality was used by a client. Uh, then there is a question, can we set up an expiry time for the live stream? Uh, it is a good uh, suggestion, John. Uh, thank you for it. Uh, we will think about it. We have already uh, had this idea from um, from ourselves. So, um, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Um, 
is there the unit video access right for a user? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, you need to have particular access rights uh, to have access to video tab. So it's not uh, for for any user. You need uh, specific access rights. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the historical playback, can we have an indicator on the calendar to show no video exists? It's also a good solution and that was uh, a good suggestion. And when I was preparing for the webinar, I also thought about this. Uh, so um, it is uh, it is a good uh, a good suggestion, John. Again, so we will think about it. Thank you. Uh, will the camera make live recording when vehicle is parked? It will make, uh, it can record a file in this case with the help of a notification so that uh, in case you can uh, control parking with the help of a notification, you can select as notification action, saving a file. And in this case, um, once a system uh, is uh, triggered to have parking detected, it will save, um, save a file. Mm. Any plans to add a link? I think that uh, I have uh, discarded this already. Uh, if a camera does not have internet connectivity, can it still be used? Um, mm, it, mm, if it's not, uh, if it's offline, it can be used to watch live stream uh, or uh, you know playback. Uh, but I think that in terms of using it uh, like a, a unit, you know, to get uh, uh, telematics data, I, if there are any. Um, you, you, I think it, it can be used, but, but in this case, no live streaming will be available because there is no connection. Why mm. uh, is the mobile app does not show the notification names as the event names? Um, because uh, our, our files have the name uh, of the notification name, not the event name. And it's uh, true both for mobile application and for web application. We show as a name of a file, we show the notification name. And uh, if you want, you can also filter by um, notification type. Mm. Okay, um, the same, almost the same question. I think that should be probably again discussed. The saved video files can have the name of the notification as a file name. What metadata can we store with the video file? Uh, so yes, so uh, the video file has uh, the name of the notification name. Um, and in regards to met, uh, metadata, uh, I think that I'm not sure that I can answer it right now, but John, we can contact you and give you this uh, information. So, because it's, there will be a lot of technical details. Uh, also, I have seen already in chat a lot of questions about downloading files. So, um, it is uh, not possible with the help of some custom functionality. So there is no button that allows to, um, to, to be pressed on it and select for the file to be uh, downloaded. But you can just use the uh, tools that are integrated in the browsers. And um, uh, by clicking on the, uh, by clicking on the file, you can use the browser tool for saving a file and now this is the functionality uh, that is available um, and surely we will be thinking about adding this functionality um, as custom you know downloading our files so that you don't need to look for some option uh, in in browser uh, but just see it uh, very quickly and easily um, there is also a question about using Google Drive. No, at the moment uh, we use um, mm, 
so we store videos and uh, we store files in Amazon Web Services. And also, just what I described uh, a couple of minutes ago, you can download the file to your computer with the help of uh, embedded uh, tools into uh, your browser. And uh, it's, not, it's not possible to send it to Google Drive or store data there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that I have added some questions about uh, downloading. Also, there was a nice question about uh, uh, working with the videos and via tag. Uh, it's also uh, in our backlog of ideas. We have also been thinking about it. So now, as we are already a commercial product, uh, we can see how it goes to market, what are the challenges, what are the main challenges, and see of uh, what should be first and foremost developed uh, um, in the frameworks of all this backlog of our ideas. And maybe this will be the feature of um, capturing videos uh, with via tag. So let's see. And once again, thank you for your idea. Um, I also have question, see questions about um, DEMS. I think that there was some... Um, some uh, communication going on here uh, so it will it has already been discussed uh, between uh, between you um, then a question about billing i think also an important one so i want to highlight it for the billing can we have the traffic package by unit and the automatic allocation of the packets uh, can be by unit as well uh not at the moment so as you see it's uh, it's mostly uh, connected to the account and all the units that are in the account uh, and uh, uh, it, it will be the same limit for all the units in the account uh, and and uh, again, let's see how it goes and if there will be cases, uh, business cases where it will be really necessary to have this uh, limit for, for um, all units in the account separately, then we can look at this ability, in more um, this um, requirement in more details and see what we will do with it. But as of now, it works just as what I shown to you. Mm. Again, a question about uh, Amazon. So right uh, now, at the moment, it's only possible to work uh, to work with Amazon Web Services, no other services. Mm -hmm. Again, about another serve uh, about another servers and another storage here. A question we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Maybe there, there are other questions that are important and should be covered for sure. Mm. Can we, um, a good question about um, that I already covered a bit, but once again, we'll repeat that uh, auto cut off of a video live. So, uh, in case you move to another uh, tab or you uh, you just close the browser uh, the uh, the button uh, to play the live stream it will be stopped so only in case um, uh, in case you open it and uh, or you or some user opens it and watches it, only in this case it will be uh, it will be working this button and live stream will go on. But in this, in case you move to to different tab, a closed browser or just uh, um, it's the browser is not active, it will be um, it will be stopped. But as I said, we will also review it as a separate suggestion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a good question about um, data protection uh, law in Europe and what is a possible service uh, way to use the video. Uh, I think uh, I think we can um, we can connect you uh, on this regard separately and uh, because it's a huge topic and it's it cannot be covered quickly here. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, then could the data be available for one year at Amazon Web Services? Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Yes, and I see that you already discussed it. So it's just five gigabytes at the moment. It's not uh, it's not stored by some time period. It's stored by gigabytes, and once it's uh, it's full, it can be increased. Uh, but again, this is the current possibility of the platform. Maybe something will will change in the future if we will see such a feedback from the market. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think that uh, it's it's fun because maybe somebody saw that uh, Denis Kotukov is a worker of Gurtam and uh, employee of, of Gurtam and uh, uh, answers uh, questions here. So thanks, Denis, uh, for your support in chat. Um, I think that. Um, I have uh, mostly covered all the questions besides those that I said uh, require more technical things uh, to discuss. So thank you very much for your activity and good questions that helped uh, to cover something that uh, we did not cover with Navas. Uh, thank you very much. And I think that um, uh, we are done. We are done with these questions. So we can move move uh, to finalizing our webinar. Sure. Thank you, Maria, for answering all the difficult questions from the viewers. And I'm glad that our viewers were engaged with us throughout the session. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today and for your interest in Violon's new functionality. We do believe that it will help you to broaden horizons and start new projects. Regarding the new projects, let me remind you that we at Violon have already announced the submission of applications for the IoT project of the year, the contest which will reveal the most interesting projects in the sphere of IoT. Please visit our website and submit your projects. You still have a bit more than a month. encouraging you to take part in this com competition. I think it will be something um, as good as usual and even better. It will be a very interesting competition. And let me please also invite you to one more important event, the long-awaited Telematics Vilnius Conference, which will take place um, on August 17th and 18th in Vilnius, uh, in the city where Gurtam headquarters is located. Very soon, we will send you the details and invitation to register for this event. And we surely will be looking forward to see all of you uh, there. Dear viewers, we thank you for all your valuable time and for your attention throughout the webinar. It was a pleasure to have you with us. I really, really thank everyone who have come and was active today and we are now uh, signing off and we hope you have learned and enjoyed a lot and enjoyed uh, this presentation thank you very much for coming thank you everyone have a wonderful day thank you bye <laughs>